Welcome to a special edition of the Panther Lair Show, having a conversation. Last week, we talked to Nellie Cummings, and this week, we've got Pitt assistant basketball coach Jason Cable joining us here. Jason, uh, thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm glad uh, we, we could sit down. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I mean, obviously, on the football side, June is a really busy month for recruiting. What does it look like on the basketball side? I mean, what, what is June um, for you guys here as we, we jump into this month? Well, we're in our second week of workouts. You know, our guys have been in school now, summer school, uh, for about two weeks. The first week, you let them have off, get acclimated to the campus, uh, the class or classes they may be taking, however frequent during the week, uh, all the testing and stuff they have to do, physicals and such. Uh, but second week, we get back to work. And so we've had two groups working in the weight room with our uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, Gary Christopher, then on the floor, uh, with myself and Coach O'Toole, uh, working with guards and wings, myself and Coach O'Toole have been working with the bigger guys, me and the twins, uh, as well as Big John. So it's been great to be back on the floor. You know, I think that's kind of our happy place, coaches, to get out of the office, go downstairs, get on the floor, get a sweat, um, and work with our guys and help them get better. You know, the, the summertime is an opportunity to be a little selfish individually because it's about you individually getting better. And then in working in small groups, we can utilize some things where guys can learn how to play together and work on the fundamental things that hopefully can carry over uh, from each week throughout the summer as we head into next season. Right. Now, are these like, um, you know, how, what are these called? Are they like organized team activities, voluntary workouts? Like what are the rules kind of allow you guys, you know, what are you able to do right now? We're allowed four hours a week oh. um, as coaches with us on the floor. Um, so again, we, we have it slotted where we do, uh, four days a week, um, and it could be different amounts of time, but skill stuff, you know, so for us, I'm working with the guards and the wings, the guys that are here. And so it's a lot of ball handling, passing, and obviously a lot of shooting. <laughs> we have to be a better shooting team. Um, and we've addressed that with recruiting. And so the guys that we have here, uh, three returners, and uh, one new guy, Nelly Cummings, who you say you spoke to last week as far as the guard and wing groups uh, with uh, Jamarius Burton, Nate Santos, Will Jeffress, and then Nike Sabande is working his way back. So seeing Nike out there has been fantastic. Um, he's very eager. So you got to kind of pull the reins back a little bit at times. But uh, just seeing him out there and seeing the guys work um, with the opportunity every day to get better individually and collectively with their voices, their hearts um, as a team has been, has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, poor Nike, he's probably itching just to play a full season, right? It's been a yeah. long time yeah. since he's been able to yeah. play, but, but he's a, a six year guy now. And it's remarkable. I mean, looking at this, this roster of, of you know, your backcourt, I mean, Jamarius is like the young guy. And he's a fifth-year senior. I mean, That's amazing. Bring in, yeah, <laughs> bring in Greg Ellie, you bring in Nelly Cummings. You have Nike. You got three six-year guys in a fifth year. You guys haven't really had that kind of experience in the backcourt. I mean, how do you see that? You know, working for you this year, it's a different approach, right? It's a different kind of team than you've had. Well, it's the kind of team that we've been trying to work to have. Uh, you want older guys, and especially you want older guards. You know, and coming in uh, four, I guess, going on five years ago, four years ago. You know, we, we, we started freshmen, three freshmen. Mm -hmm. um, the following year, we, those kids became sophomores. Um, you want older players. Mm -hmm. You know, you want juniors and seniors. You want to get to that point. We didn't have that luxury when we got here. You know, our three best players, along with uh, Jared Wilson Frame, were older guys, were, were, were younger guys, the freshman class. And so to have older guys with experience, um, and Chris winning experience, you know, I mean, you look at Jamarius, he's, he's, he's helped lead a team to, to the NCAA tournament. He's mm -hmm. played in multiple postseasons. You look at what Nelly has been able to do um, in leading a team to the NCAA tournament and performing, um, playing at a high level. Um, you know, you look at, you know, a guy like, you know, Greg coming in, like he's played on a high level. He's made shots and scored. Um, on a high level with competitive teams. So, you know, we look at what we have, and then you add Nike back to that mix who, I mean, Nike's a world-class athlete. Um, he, could, he could possibly leave his college career as a 2,000-point score, uh, made over 200 threes. He's a proven scorer. He's a proven defender. Um, 
and he's a guy that we need for his athleticism, his punts on both sides of the ball defensively and offensively. And he's attacked his rehab. He's hungry to get back. And we feel good about having an older unit. Now we have to come together and make a team, but to have older guys with experience of handling the basketball, passing the basketball and making shots um, is something we've coveted and something we're very happy to have um, on our roster headed into the next season. It might depend on the individual, but do you feel like older guards like that are maybe because they're a little older, a little more mature, they might maybe be able to mesh a little bit better, you know, maybe young guards, like I want to be the guy and kind of, you know, sort of bulls fighting, whereas, you know, older guards maybe understand how they have to work together a little bit better. I mean, do you, do you feel like that might be something that you'll see this year? Well, it can be, I mean, it, it Chris, it can go either way, you know, <laughs> it, as far as just the landscape of how, uh, kids can be, but, you know, in recruiting, we really wanted to hone in on character. We really wanted to, to hone in on making the pieces fit. Um, and when you're speaking of guards, having guards that can shoot the basketball, guards that can handle and pass, can make decisions, that can think the game, that can see things going on around them. Um, we played against Nelly here, so we know what he can do as well as watching film. Obviously, JB has done it. You know, I mean, JB hit two game winners for us. You look at Madison Square Garden, what he did against St. John's, and then um, at Florida State on the road where it was kind of a dagger, you know, he put in. So, you know, he's a guy that is proving it, scoring, facilitating, can play on and off the ball. But he has the oomph to be able to take big shots when necessary. Again, Nike, you saw a small sample at this level with Nike, because again, his first year was, you know, the stuff and transferring and then he got hit with, what was it called, with COVID, with uh, being close to somebody or around somebody that may have had it. Uh, contact tracing, I think is what we called it then. Yeah, right, right, so right. He, he just got hit from every angle that year, but you saw towards the end what he could do. I think his last game, uh, against Miami, 24, 25 points, four or five threes. He's a guy that can score, that can defend, that can do a lot of things athletically for you. And then you look at what Greg has been able to do and the role he had to play um, at Marquette. He's a guy that can come in and make shots. Mm -hmm. He can make shots. He's long. He's older. He can defend. He's been coached and coached hard. So we like our group. Uh, we'll continue to add maybe one or two more guys. But when you talk about our guards, with the younger guys and, you know, Nate Santos and Will, you know, Nate's a guy that last year, I mean, let's be honest, he helped us beat uh, St. Saint Francis here. Um, it wasn't St. Francis. It was the team in Baltimore. I forget who it was. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Townsend. Right. Townsend. That's it. Townsend. Oh, yeah. That's right. Townsend. That's right. Yeah. He helped us beat Townsend. Mm -hmm. We had 14 big points. Um, so he started, he got experience. He got thrown into the fire. But prior to that, he hadn't played in two years. He tore his ACL, and then he had the COVID year himself. So he's getting better. Will's working to get better. Uh, so as far as our guards and wings, what we have in place, we're happy about it. Um, but we're also continuing to add guys as well. Sure. Um, so, I mean, that's that's the team and, and the stuff you're able to do right now with workouts. What about when you go back out on the road? When would you guys um, be able to start going out and recruiting again? You know, in the next Well, we week? had a couple of recruiting periods. Um, already mm -hmm. um, but the landscape of college basketball now is a little different you know because the recruiting periods fall also while the transfer portal is in full swing and you could be having uh, official visits so we've been out as far as the EYBL uh, Adidas Under Armour uh, we've been out looking at uh, you know kids in the 2023 we have one commitment already for that class we have a couple guys that we've honed in on um, that we could possibly start the official visit process now in the month of June with those kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then in June, which you asked earlier, you have two periods in June where we can go out and recruit. That's more of with the high schools. That's not AAU. That's the kids playing with their high school teams and high school events. So we'll do that at the end of the month. And then July turns back to the AAU circuit. So, uh, you know, our game plan is still in place of what we want, what we need. Uh, as far as 
the best you can look into the future of what 2023 will look like for that recruiting class. Um, again, we have one commitment um, and we have a couple kids that uh, we will bring in for official visits uh, in the month of June from that class. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask just about kind of the recruiting process, but I don't even know if I should start with recruiting or, or transfers because I feel, <laughs> I, I mean, is it even a 50-50 split at this point, like how you spend your time or, or do you feel like you're like 75% of your time is spent on transfers. I mean, it just seems like it's taken over right now. Well, Chris, the thing that we did that I think we're very thankful for, uh, we were able to hire a couple of extra guys to our staff. Mm -hmm. And in this current landscape of college basketball, I think that's imperative. You know, when you look at uh, being able to add Kyle Saplicki, uh, who was associate head coach of Vermont, well, now he can be a guy that can monitor the transfer portal for us in advance. So if kids go into the portal, you kind of know who it might be. You have film already. You can kind of, when it happens with, to the minute, like you have to be to the minute of these things. <laughs> if you're a day late or well, you're late because mm -hmm. now you're behind possibly 20 to 50 schools. So to have him on the staff, um, you know, to have Jake Pursuti on the staff, just basketball minds that can help us be organized and help us be ready and prepared. Uh, because again, from year to year, I don't think any coach can tell you whether it's 50-50, 60-40. I don't think they can tell you because you don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know, but you have to be prepared. And so being able to have those guys on the staff has, has been invaluable to us, to have a plan, to have preparation, to zone in on guys that you want, and then have guys that you know you can go after as well but to have a plan in place, as much information at your disposal in place. Because again, the second you see that name go in the portal, you, if it's someone that you want, that you covet, you have to be prepared to make contact with the kid and whoever else is involved in that process as soon as possible. Right. Um, recruiting high school kids is, uh -huh. it's the same, but it's not the same, <laughs> you know, because you have to still have those relationships and, you know, but, between the portal high school and then the name image and likeness, things are a little different now than they were two years ago, let alone when I came out in 1998. So things are changing and everyone has to be willing, able, and eager to change with them. Yeah. I mean, just how much the, the transfers, how much has it just changed how you have to approach roster management, both in terms of guys you're going to add and guys that you're going to lose. I mean, do you kind of just sort of assume there's going to be a certain amount of attrition? You might not be able to name guys, but you just kind of know, right? Well, we're probably going to lose two or three because this is just what happens. The word is you have to be prepared. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. may not know, but you have to be prepared for anything that could or will happen. Um, and you have to have a plan. And you have to, again, that's why I think having a staff that can be prepared as time goes on when you look at during the season, when the season's coming to a close, when the season ends and the portal starts to, you know, go for maybe it's a certain number um, over the break, which is December. Could be guys jumping in then. That's mm -hmm. one slate of it to the onslaught, which is going to be, you know, in March. And as the tournament ends and teams lose, it's going to be more. So just to be prepared um, and, and kind of know what you might need what you think you might need <laughs> and, and have a plan in place of who you may want to go after as far as who's going to be in the portal, who you know is going to be in the portal and just uh, take your swings, swing and try to get the guys you really want. Right. Well, you know, a guy like Nelly, um, you obviously saw him early in the season. He scored what he scored 18 against you guys or something like yeah. that. He had a good game against you guys. Is that a name as you're getting toward the end of the season? Is he a guy that you, you have a feeling you know, or maybe you get word through the grapevine that he might be a candidate. And and how does how does the process go, or how did the process go with Nelly? You know, leading up to the time he went in the portal, and kind of once he finally went in. You know, how, how did the process go for you guys? Well, Nelly was unique because uh, he's a guy that obviously is from the area. Uh, he put his name in the portal last year, mm -hmm. and so there were conversations. I had a conversation with Nelly myself last year when he put his name in the portal and he decided to go back. I know a lot of, I know Nelly's coach, 
Uh, I'm well aware of Nelly's little brother. So I've been out there to see him. So you have some relationships that were already there. And then, you know, from uh, that, which was built last year with him in the portal, when he went in this year, it was a familiarity with one another, with him, with his father, with his family, um, the area. And so you could jump right back into that. Um, and obviously, he, he, he's a kid that's from the area that, if we're being honest, most likely he wanted to come to Pittsburgh uh, when he was coming out of high school. He's made some turns from Bowling Green to Colgate to make himself uh, into the player he's become with the help of the staff that he's played for and teammates he's played with. And so just selling him on coming home having a chance to play in front of his family, not just one game out of the year like he did this year, because the whole section behind Colgate was the Nelly Cummings section, <laughs> you know? And so being able to have that for a lion's share of the games, for his family to see him on his last ride, for his little brother to be there, for his dad to be there, for his friends from the area to be behind him, um, is something that he wanted. And so we worked at it. The relationships were what were made from top to bottom. Um, we had something he was looking for and he was definitely someone that we coveted it ourselves. So we thought it was a perfect marriage. Um, it worked out pretty quickly. They mm -hmm. took an unofficial visit here, spent some time um, a day, you know, got to walk around and meet everybody and meet the team, be around the guys. Um, our players did a fantastic job in helping in the recruiting process. Um, and so it was, it, it just, it, it felt good. It felt right knowing him, his character, who he was. Nelly and his family, they know what it's like for Pittsburgh to be really good, for this program to be really good, for the Peterson Event Center to be rocking. He knows it. He feels it. Um, it's something that he grew up around. He grew up working out in this gym when he was, you know, in fourth grade, shooting, you know, coming around, just doing things. So. It's in his blood. Those are the kind of guys you want. Those are the kind of guys that have helped Pittsburgh be really, really good in the past. And so to have a kid like that, that wants to be here, that loves the program, knows what it's about, that can help you from that position leading the way is something that was very important. So we feel lucky. We feel grateful. And I know he feels the same. Mm -hmm. You guys, I mean, obviously the, the past four years, haven't been at the level of success that, that you wanted. I, I think, it, you know, you guys certainly would like to win. Everybody would like to win more games every year. But when you're, when you're going through the years that you guys have had, you're coming off, well, like an 11-win season, what do, what do you emphasize in the recruiting process? I mean, you talked about what Pitt used to be. Do you kind of focus on that of, like, this is what it can be? Um, I know relationships are always important. But how do you kind of recruit to get to the level of success when you maybe haven't had a ton of it to this point? Like, what, what's sort of the, the recruiting angles, I guess? Well, first and foremost, with the current way that the landscape of college basketball is, you have to recruit your own players. So ensuring that, you know, your core guys are back. Mm -hmm. um, and so with, with Jamarius, with Nike, with those guys coming back, with, with Nate, with Will, and obviously with John. I mean, let's, let's be clear. John, John is going to be one of the best players in college basketball. He's going to be one of the best players in the ACC. Um, and he has some work to do to continue to make strides. But when you have a core, and you look at, you say, experienced guards, we feel like we have a pretty, a very good big man that can be dominant. Well, you recruit to that. And with what Pittsburgh is, you want toughness. You want guys that are together. You want guys that are willing to do the dirty things, the extra things that it takes to win. Because to me, that's when Pitt was really good. It may not always be pretty. You may walk over, but you're going to limp back. And a lot of times, hopefully, you're limping back with a loss. And so recruiting kids to that around what we have. And what we have is a dominant big guy. So we wanted to get shooting around him, create space. So you look at the guards we have. Every one of them can make a shot, can make a play, can pass the basketball. You look at what we were able to add in Blake Henson, a guy that the last time he played in the SEC was 10 and five, 10 and six, and he can shoot the basketball. He's a guy that can play inside out, um, could be, you know, a guy that stretches the floor from the forward position. So we've added shooting, we've added toughness, we've added 
older guys that have won and some leadership. You have to make it a team every year, you know, especially in today's world. And so that's what we're doing now. We have guys here for first session of summer school. We have the entire team uh, for the second session of summer school. With the older guys, you know, Feta Federico, he's a 6'11 guy that can run, can screen, can roll, plays well above the rim, can block shots, has to add some weight, but he, he's a contrast to John. Then you want to add a couple young guys. And in that, we, you know, got two of the greatest kids that can, and, and, and they can play. They're great kids, seven foot, six eleven. They can shoot the basketball, talking Jorge um, and Guillermo um, that love Pittsburgh, love what we're about, understand there's a process they have to get better. Um, but they're hung hungry to do that, hungry to learn, and they want to be a part of the process of what it takes for Pittsburgh to be good. And they add something we need. They have size, they have length, and they have the ability to shoot the basketball and think the game from that international standpoint, which they're taught at a young age, which we aren't taught here in the United States at a young age. They are as international players. So the emphasis in recruiting, you want guys that want to be at Pittsburgh, all right? They want to represent that jersey, represent everything that this program is about. They want to get better. They want to throw themselves into the program and understand the toughness that it takes to win an ACC. We've shown we can do it. We have to be able to sustain it and take it to a new level. We feel like the guys we have understand that. They've done it the places they've been respectfully, and they're hungry to do it at this level. And last one for you, Jason, just because as you talk about John and kind of his role with the team and his significance here, it kind of reminds me as, as we've gone through this out off season, we've interviewed some of the guys you've been after, recruits, transfers, and John's name comes up a lot. <laughs> he seems like he's really involved. Somebody even said to me, he, he might be acting like he's like the GM or something. Yeah, like, GM has come up. This, yeah. I mean, what is, I mean, is that a sign of leadership? And just what have you seen out of him in, in that? I know what you want to see from him on the court, but off the court this offseason, what have you seen from John? I've seen a guy that loves Pittsburgh. I've seen a guy that loves the University of Pittsburgh, loves the opportunity that he's been granted, um, is appreciative of it, the opportunity, the second opportunity, and the chance to continue to fulfill his dreams for himself his personal goals, team goals, and to be able to help take care of his family. So what I've seen is growth. I've seen a kid that has gone through some things and he's coming out on the other side and understanding that he's been given an opportunity by the people here, by our head coach, by Heather Like, our athletic director, and everybody embrace him. Listen, John's a great kid, not a good kid, a great kid. Um, and so to see him throw himself into let's be clear, the GM role <laughs> um, has been pretty cool, you know, because he wants guys to play around him, to play with him. Um, he's been selfless in that. He understands, yes, he had a good year, but our team did not have a good year. And so he needs guys around him that can help him, that can give him that two or three inches of space, that can push him, that are older, that he can lean on himself. And so his role has just been one of growth. He's slowly taken on a leadership role. That's something he's continuing to grow into. But it's been really cool to see the growth in that young man from when we started recruiting him as a sophomore in high school to what he's becoming now as, I guess, technically a rising junior or sophomore, whatever it might be. Um, and his love for this program uh, and his want to be a part of the reason that this program continues to grow in the right direction. That's very important to him um, and what he wants to build as a college basketball player on and off the floor. So the things he's doing to help us as a program, the things he's doing in the community here in the Hill District, um, around Pittsburgh with kids in different avenues um, has been fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's been really cool to see his growth, his maturity. He has a long way to go, <laughs> but he's taken the necessary steps to get there while showing his love for this program. So that's very, very cool. Very uh, cool. <clears throat> sounds good, Jason. Well, thanks so much for your time. I, I appreciate it. It's been fun to uh, chat with you for a little bit. Good luck the rest of the way this summer with the workouts and recruiting, and we will um, see you this fall once the season starts.
Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Elder Pitt.